become as guests invited when Jesus bids us dine. His friends on earth united to share the bread and wine. The bread of life is broken, the wine is freely poured for us in solemn token of Christ our dying Lord. We eat and drink receiving from Christ the grace we need, and in our hearts believing on him by faith we feed. With wonder and thanksgiving for love that knows no end, we find in Jesus living our ever-present friend. One bread is ours for sharing, one single fruitful vine, our fellowship declaring, renewed in bread and wine, renewed, sustained, and given by token, sign, and word, the pledge and seal of heaven, the love of Christ our Lord. Friends, it is so good to be here with you to celebrate the Passover and to remember how our Lord God delivered our ancestors from Egypt. Tonight, I give you a new ceremony to celebrate a new deliverance that comes. It is right that you who are closest to me be the first to know. But I tell you the truth that this night, one of you will betray me. One of you who is sitting here with me. It is to he who I give this piece of bread after I have dipped it in the cup. Who is it? I am James, the brother of John. I remember that day very clearly three years ago when we were cleaning our nets at the Sea of Galilee with our father Zebedee. Jesus approached us and called John and me to follow him. He didn't have to call us twice. We were honored to go. And later when he asked us to be one of his 12 apostles, we were humbled by his trust. I was there at Peter's home the day that Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. Later, I was with him at Jairus' house when Jesus raised his little daughter from the sleep of death. On the Mount of Transfiguration, I saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah with my own eyes. Our mother, Salome, is rather ambitious for us and urged us to press our claims on Jesus. So, last week as we approached Jerusalem, we asked if we could sit one at his right hand and one at his left when he comes into his kingdom. And Jesus replied, you don't know what you're asking. Are you sure that you can drink the cup I am to drink and be baptized with my baptism? We answered, Lord, we are able. He then replied that we would indeed drink his cup and be baptized with his baptism, but he did not have the power to grant the privilege of sitting at his right hand or at his left in his kingdom. Some of the others were a little bit angry when they heard what we had asked, but Jesus reminded us that if one wants to be first, he must become the servant of all. Tonight, he, he demonstrated those words when and he washed our feet right before supper. Jesus' teachings have always been like that. Once, 
when some people from a certain Samaritan village didn't receive him like we thought they should, we ask him to call down fire from heaven and destroy them. Jesus rebuked us as only he could, reminded us that God's way is one of love. And now, he who taught us the way of love is going to be betrayed by, by one whom he loves. Who could it be? How could one of us do such a thing? Deep in my own heart, I, I wonder, Lord, is it I? Is it I? changed. We left the boat immediately and followed him. He nicknamed James and me the, the sons of thunder, <laughs> but we're, we're not really rowdy men. We're normally quiet, hard workers, though we may get a little impatient at times with those who reject Jesus. Since the day he called me, I have tried to understand Jesus by loving him. It seems to me that he is as much of God as any human could ever be. Yeah, I think that He is the God who existed before creation and will still exist at the end of time. That He is the Word 
God would speak to all people for all time. Yet I love him as a person. And he's returned that love. Sometimes he, he calls me the beloved disciple. I have been with Jesus through his greatest trials, as well as his hours of victory. I was there on the Mount of Transfiguration and beheld his glory. He told me of his talk with Nicodemus and, and spoke those wonderful words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. Someday I want to write down some of his sayings and, and his many wonderful deeds so that others may read and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and have life in his name. Peter and I made the arrangements for the celebration of the Passover here tonight because we are numbered among his chosen, his inner circle. Yet he just said that one of us will betray him. I, I, I can't believe it. Surely it's not James, or my brother, or, or Peter, or Andrew. I would sooner believe it of myself. Could I, the beloved disciple, be the one? Is it I? Is it I? I am Simon, now called Peter. My brother Andrew and I were fishing on the Sea of Galilee one afternoon. As we were casting our nets, Jesus walked by and invited us to follow him. There was a quality in his voice and a peace in his face that drew us near to him. We put down our nets and followed his call. Later, he used our boat as a platform to speak to the great multitudes that followed him. On a morning soon after, he said to me, Simon, put out into the deep water and cast your nets for a catch. I said, Master, we've been fishing all night and have caught nothing. But by your word, we will put down our nets. We caught so many fish that we had to summon other nearby boats to contain the catch. Upon returning to the shore, I fell at his feet and cried out, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. But he encouraged me by saying, from this day forward, you shall be a fisher of men. While the others called me the big fisherman, I felt small and unworthy in his presence. Jesus seemed to always understand my nature as good and evil, as godliness and devilishness. And yet, he accepted me as one of his closest disciples. It was Jesus who changed my name from Simon to Peter, which means the rock. While traveling near Caesarea Philippi, I declared him the Christ, the son of the living God. What happened next went straight to my heart. For he said, Upon this rock I shall build my church. Yet moments later, as we were discussing the journey to Jerusalem to die at the hands of evil men, he rebuked me by saying, Get behind me, Satan. I so much want to prove to him that my love and loyalty and devotion are genuine. Tonight, he told us that one of us would betray him. I promised that I would follow him until death. But he warned me that before the cock crowed twice, I would deny him three times. He prayed for me, saying that Satan wanted me to sift me like wheat. Will I deny him tonight, as he's foretold? And if I do, what will he do? Will he disown me? Will he deny me? Will he close the doors of the kingdom to me? 
if I knew who the scoundrel was, I would pierce his heart with this knife that I hold in my hand. But wait, what if the heart that I pierce is mine? I pray, God, that this is not so. For I wonder and say to myself, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Is that all these Galileans can ask? Is it I? Normally they are arguing with each other about who is the greatest in the kingdom. Yes, the kingdom. What kingdom? If the master does not act soon, there will be no kingdom. The Romans have already arrested Barabbas and his followers and thrown him into that dungeon prison. He will never see the light of day. Now the master is our only hope. Forgive me, I, I am Judas of Caria, the only Judean in the twelve. Well, the master is Judean. One would assume that the sons of Judah would stick together. Them, I know they snarl when they speak at me. Here comes Judas, here comes Iscariot. But no matter to me, for my zeal compels me toward God's will. I know they think I'm a thief, but who do you think keeps bread on their table and wine on their lips? And I have even heard they call me the devil. I might be deceptive, for I have convinced the gutless leaders of the Jewish people to give me silver. For our cause. And all I have to do is turn him over to them. What are they going to do with him? They are no match for his wisdom. And the crowds, they, they love him. They hate them. Seems like a rather poor investment, if you ask me. He knows. He knows. I know that you know. I know that you are there. You are watching. You are always watching. You know 
that I would not betray you. You were Messiah, God's chosen, anointed to lead us in rebellion against the enemies of our people. I have wagered my life for our cause. You know. Why do you kick against the go? A new and better way? I would relish that as long as it required having a sword in my hand. But that is not to be, is it? Master. Master. Master, rise up. Throw off the yoke of these uncircumcised pagans. His promise to deliver his people. It is your destiny. It is our destiny. You give me bread. How many times have I heard you say, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word from the Father's mouth? I have read the prophecies, I know the law. God has promised to lead us out of slavery. And you give me bread. You know what I have done, do you know? They will come for you this very evening. I have put it in your hands. Fulfill your destiny. Or have I? One day you will fight. But do not waste the moment wondering. Is it I? I'm the Reverend Donita Lee, and it is my privilege to serve at St. James United Methodist Church here in Abilene, Texas. And for most of my parishioners and friends, I'm known as Dot or Pastor Dot. And I thank you for welcoming us into your home. This evening, as you have observed with our reenactment, you learned that it is very likely that all of us have a vulnerable place of denying our Christ. But what we can celebrate, what we know to be true, is that Christ offers us grace. Let me tell you the rest of the story. That evening, after he had gathered with the disciples, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed. And he asked the Lord if this be, if this not be what he would have to do that let that pass. But he wanted to do what God had called him to do and what God had asked him to do, which was sacrifice himself for the payment of our sins. And so he was captured. He went before many judgments. He was tortured. He was crucified on a cross. He died, was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the death to prove that he had conquered death. And he had conquered the payment of our sins. We are broken people, and without his grace, there is no payment for our sin worthy enough. And so it is that God provided the covenant for us, that we would have this covenant fulfilled, that Christ would come and be the Paschal Lamb for us. He would make the sacrifice of his body and his blood. And as he rose from the dead, he showed himself among those that believed. He he then rose and ascended and sits at the right hand of God the Father and left for us not alone but Holy Spirit that would lead and guide, would encourage us, would support us, would strengthen and sustain us, would teach us the truth, the truth of his sacrifice. And like the early church that we read about in Acts chapter 2, we have an opportunity to break bread and to drink from the cup that would remind us of this sacrifice that Jesus made. Now, while we're not together in person, we cannot consecrate, well, 
Holy Spirit does not consecrate these elements for us all to share, but rather we can use the practice of the early church that every time we gather together at our tables that we can break the bread and remember that Christ is our bread of life. We can take the cup and remember that he is our living water. And though these elements are consecrated, they can be symbolic for us. We call that the love feast. And we can remember that when we break the bread, Christ indeed broke his body and gave it for us, for our healing and wholeness. And that when we take from the cup, be it water or juice or wine, that we know Christ is our living water. And Christ will be for us that which quenches the thirst of our soul. And so as we break the bread and we take it and we dip it or we drink from the cup, let us too remember this gift that Christ has given us. And let us celebrate with each other that remembrance until we can come together again. Have Holy Spirit consecrate the elements for us and we may receive Holy Communion, Christ in the presence. We thank you for joining us tonight. And may you receive this gift that Jesus Christ has offered, this gift of his sacrifice for the payment of our sins, that indeed we may live together for an eternity. Amen. Christ redeemed.